The earliest memory I have of Yellow Creek Baptist Church was the old church. Uh, I had a pastor at my home church, Timber Ridge Baptist Church, Alvin Burns. He helped in revival, and, and we came and sung. I believe Robert Nix was the pastor at the time. We came and sung that night at Yellow Creek in an old sanctuary and had a great service, had a, had a great time. Uh, so, so that would be my, my earliest memory of being in Yellow Creek. I was, uh, <coughs> well I had to start when I got saved. I got saved in Timber Ridge at, at seven years old. And I knew I was saved and, and I was thrilled to be saved. And uh, uh, I was just excited about uh, being a Christian, you know. I, Back in those days, uh, we saw a lot of people be saved, and, and and we were taught that's the most important thing is to be saved, and I got saved, and, and, and I was thrilled to be saved, but as time went on, <clears throat> and, and looking back now, I know the Lord was dealing with me, and, and, and began to stir in my heart, and, and I thought, what, what's going on, you know, I'm saved, and, what, what, what is this trouble in, uh, in my heart? Uneasiness. And, uh, and I was young. Uh, and I, 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 would, I would go pray and I'd try to study and study my Bible and try to, try to pray. It. And the more I, I studied and the more I prayed about it and the more I sought the Lord, uh, I realized. At 11 years old, and I know that sounds young, but it's, it's the truth. Uh, I was 11 years old, and I knew the Lord. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt the Lord called me to preach when I was 11 years old. And, and, and people, and I know in today's world, people think, my goodness, you know. But it, it's the truth. It, it, and I fought with it and struggled with it for years, and it was. It was a long time after that, you know, and I would think, well, I'm, I'm too young. I can't, I can't, I can't be a preacher at 11 years old. And, and, and that was my excuse, you know. And, and I fought with that and struggled with that. And, and, and really, uh, and I'm, I'm going to quote what Dean Bryant said. Uh, he said, I wasn't a volunteer, I was drafted. And that's the way I feel about it. And I'm excited. I'm glad God called me to preach. Looking back now, as, 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 as being 44 years old, I see what a blessing it was. But at a young, as a young person at that young age, I thought, anything but this. I did. Now, I did. I, that's what I thought. But um, it, I was 23 when I finally surrendered to the call to preach. So there was, there was a lot of years went by. Uh, a lot of struggling with that. One of the greatest blessings in my life being called priest. And that's what it was. It, 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 was, it was an unction. It was a nudge. It was, it was you know, and like I say, I, I was glad to be saved and glad to be in the church and a member of the church. But 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 when he began to nudge me and, uh, and, and deal with my heart, and dealt with my heart, you know. And, and, and you know, I remember at 11 years old,
being a pastor of a church, you got to have a burden. Just, just, just because you're called a priest, that don't mean you, you, you're, you're supposed to pastor everywhere. You got to have a, a burden from God about a certain church. That, that's the way I feel about it, and I believe that's the way it is. But I had thought about Yellow Creek for years. I really did. Uh, and I knew, I, well, I said, I say I knew. I felt like one day I'll pass to Yellow Creek. And that, that goes probably back to when Chris Gilbert was a pastor here. I mean, Yellow Creek always was on my heart. You understand what I'm saying? Not saying that I just had the burden, but I think the Lord works things out to prepare us for, for, for that. And, and, and I always thought about Yellow Creek for years, but but really, uh, <clears throat> when I left Chesty T, when, when, when the Lord uh, moved us from Chesty T, and, and, uh, and, and I, was, I was really busy preaching at a lot of different churches, and uh, had a lot of different opportunities, all I could think about uh, was Yellow Creek. That's all I could think about. Uh, that was on my heart. I knew, and, 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 and really, there was churches that approached me about maybe being a pastor or how I felt about being a pastor. And all I could think about was Yellow Creek. That's all I could think about. That, that was my heart. So when the deacon showed up, I, I knew. I knew for that guy. <laughs> and I know now. I do, Chris. I know my heart now. Something sticks out in my mind, and, and, and I think about, uh, you know, days helping in revivals here and, and, and helping in baptizes even before I was pastor here at Yellow Creek. Uh, I, I think about a lot of good times, a lot of good services, many good services when people were shouting and praising the Lord, people being saved. But I guess, Bristol, my fondest memory would be the revival when Stevie. Barrett was a pastor here, uh, and we helped in the revival. It was in the springtime here in the harbor, and there was nine got saved, and I believe one of your girls was one of them. And, uh, and, and really that, I mean, above all, and I'm not putting that in above, we had a lot of good revivals, a lot of good times, but, but I guess the fondest memory I have is that revival. Nine souls got saved, and, and there was so many people. They was, we, we'd meet out here and pray, and there'd be 40, 40 men standing out there in a circle and get down and pray, and the power of God moved, and the Spirit of God moved, and, and, and people just got revived. We had revival, but we were hungry for a revival, for a revival. and we wanted revival. And, and, and God, you know, and I know the young people around this church and community have been meeting and praying for months and months and months, asking God for revival. So when revival time got here, we were ready, and God sent a revival last night. Great time. My hope uh, for Yellow Creek Baptist Church, if time lasted 200 more years, I would hope uh, Yellow Creek would be uh, a church uh, and, and I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday he said out of all the places he's visited lately he said there, there's not a congregation like Yellow Creek he said there's there's so many young people young families uh, children teenagers uh, uh, grown people adults older people he said it's just he said a lot of churches you see they're just either old or young but but in 200 years I would like Yellow Creek to be a place uh, that still preaches God's word and the power and the fullness in the spirit they still believe that Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed on Calvary's cross is the only way to salvation that's the only atonement for our sins uh, a, a place that still seeks God in, in, in every aspect of the church that we put Him first. I'd like for it to be a place where people can still 
uh, a sanctuary where people can still come in out of the world as a place of refuge, a strength for families. Just like you said, Bristol, Yellow Creek needs to be that to everybody. A special place, a place where I can say, I got saved here, or my family got saved, my children. You know what else I like to see? I, like, I, I within 200 years, and me and he's gonna be long gone, we're gonna be all young. I'd like to see your great, great, great grandkids still have as much stock in Yellow Creek as what you do. I love to see families that, I'm from Timberidge, that's my home church, that, that is. My great grandparents went to Timberidge, my grandparents went to Timberidge, my mom and daddy went to Timberidge. I'm a member of Timberidge. I, I want people at Yellow Creek to love Yellow Creek and say, that's my home in 200 years. I want somebody in 200 years to get behind the pulpit and preach Jesus Christ or crucified and a risen Savior in 200 years. I want people to get under conviction in 200 years and know I got to be saved to get to heaven. Still, it, it don't matter if it's 2,000 years. It still takes Jesus Christ and it still takes His drawing and it still takes His convicting for people to be born again. That's, that's what I want. And, and I know the landscape's gonna change. The church is a building may change, but Jesus Christ, the Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, and he changes not. Bristol, if it's 200 years in Yellow Creek, it'll take the same Jesus. It's just like you said a minute ago, the same Jesus that was preached at the very first service here, I hope it's the same Jesus this priest at the last one. Nothing's, nothing new. Just Jesus Christ. That's, that, that'll work. <laughs> that'll work. <laughs> Be glad. Lord, it's an honor and a privilege to bow in this arbor time. And Lord, we come to you, Lord, with a thankful heart for the blessings you've bestowed upon us. Uh, Lord, for the goodness, Lord, that you've showed us. And Lord, uh, we're definitely most thankful for, uh, for salvation in our lives, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for where you brought us from. And Lord, we're most thankful for where you carried us to, Lord. And how humble we uh, kneel before you this morning, Lord, and realize that that you're the only goodness, Lord, we've ever known. And you're the greatness, Lord, that we've experienced in our lives, Lord. And as we uh, bow, as Briston said, uh, Lord, to pray a prayer for Yellow Creek, Lord, I ask you, Lord, this morning, Lord, that you just always, Lord, have your hands, Lord, around Yellow Creek Baptist Church. And Lord, I ask you, Lord, that you'd always be the unseen guest, Lord, that's in every note that's played and every song that's sung. Lord, every word that's preached, Lord, let it be anointed, Lord, with your spirit and your power. And Lord, always uh, let Yellow Creek be a light on the hill, uh, Lord, that can't be here. Lord, a place where lost souls would come in and uh, receive salvation, Lord, a place where our children can grow in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And Lord, if time lasts, Lord, uh, for 200 more years or 2,000 more years, I pray that every man that ever stands behind the pulpit of Yellow Creek, Lord, it be a God-called man. Lord, that you'd anoint them, Lord, from on high, and they'd preach the word of God, whether it's popular or whether it's not popular. And Lord, they'd uh, tell, Lord, about uh, how sweet heaven is, Lord, and they would uh, preach about how uh, horrible a place hell is. And they, they, they always, always preach that Jesus Christ is the only way. 
And we know and realize this, and Lord, it'll take the blood that's shed on Calvary's cross, uh, Lord, for them to be saved, and it'll take uh, you drawing and convicting, Lord, their lost soul and letting them see where they stand. Lord, I ask you blessings, Lord, even, uh, Lord, on this church today, be with uh, our children, our young people, our young married people, our uh, older uh, members of this church. Lord, be with uh, every job in this church, Lord, and we ask you to bless it, Lord, and uh, let it be done in accordance to your will. Lord, we thank you for grace. Thank you that it's sufficient. Thank you, Lord, for saving a wretch like me. Continue to bless Yellow Creek. Have you on your way around this church, and we'll be careful to bow our unworthy heads and give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for us all, for all these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.